Welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Will Comer and Psycho Goldfish. Guys, welcome to the Newgrounds podcast. I'm Will. I got Psycho Goldfish here. And in prep for the block party, which we just announced is coming on August 29th, we got Zinzenix here with us today. Hello. <laughs> what up? What up? What up? What's what up? up? <laughs> oh my god. What's up? What's <laughs> up? Oh man. Block party, art contest. We got a lot going on in August, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. This is the first time I think that you have been on the show with us in, or if it's not, I feel bad, but uh first time being on the show, yes. That's uh, right. While recording anyway. He showed up for Pico Day, but we, I we did. Yeah, we just we destroyed oh, that's all evidence. True. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What happened we, to that episode? It's like lost. <laughs> it's not lost, it's just uneditable. Yeah, it's like uh, twenty hours. <laughs> <laughs> The Pico Day event funny. was 20 hours of just drinking and entertaining guests because we didn't think of anything else. Exactly. If you're, uh, if you're listening to this episode and you missed Pico Day live, uh, it sucks to be you. But you definitely don't want to miss the block party live. Tell them why, Will. Because it is a Discord streaming version of a real party, which is almost as cool as actually having a real party. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> That's the crowd. Yeah. I'm doing the crowd noise. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh getting drunk at home except with like you know a bunch of strangers it's well, almost I'm, like a I'm real doing party that, i'm doing that right now and so, everyone's yelling cool. over each other so, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah but seriously this block party started because mostly just because we wanted to throw a party and we wanted to do something special like back when we've done events like pico day or when grounds patrol did operation 2009 and stuff it's just kind of like when you put a name to the episode you make it a freaking blast. You book as much awesome art as you can for it. And you just kind of like produce it like a really fun thing. It's a really fun thing. It's surprising that that's how that goes. It's a fun right. thing that became a runaway train because it's so much fun. You guys are going to have your minds blown. <laughs> I'm just, I'm happy you guys approach me for like the art aspect of it. Like um, putting just like my love for art. Like I'm, I'm happy that can be put to good use. Like on Pico Day, you guys had me choose like my favorite, what, top three uh, drawings for Pico Day. And that was fun. Mm -hmm. Like elaborating uh, live the, the reason why I enjoy certain submissions. It's. It's cool to be able to get that across. And I think I did that very well. And I was like so excited to hear that episode come out. But it turns out there's just too much <laughs> going on. And all that is gone. Well, it's funny to recreate everything you said here today. Oh, yeah. Word for word. I think I'm good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I try to use big words, okay, when I'm explaining art. <laughs> so I don't think I can actually repeat what I said. And I might even choose different uh, drawings based on how I feel. You know, art is weird like that. Yeah. Definitely. Zen, how would you describe, like, what your side of the block party is to somebody that has never seen any of the announcements, doesn't know what's going on at all? Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Um, my side of the block party is basically a bunch of artists who are very familiar with each other, at least mutuals or somewhat in the same circle. They're all going to be streaming art together and like talking and interacting with the audience. So it's going to be like a really, really good time for a bunch of friends and then some somewhat familiar artists to get to know each other while while just getting to know the public as well. So I don't know. My side would be kind of like the... Like the character caricature caricatures that you find that you get at like the carnival or whatever. It's it's That's you walk hilarious. in or like an artist alley, an artist alley. It'd be yeah. like that. That is my side of the black party. So you you get to meet all these wonderful artists, and then if you if you donate or like get a get them a coffee or whatnot, you can even get little doodles from them in their in their respective styles. So it's 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 really just a, a really creative side of it and interactive as well. You're going to be doing, like, blocks where it's, like, certain groups together at different times, too, correct? 
Absolutely, they're all time slots. They're one hour time slots. So everyone's scheduled in their in their respective spots. So as hmm. as the night goes on, you you you'll have a schedule of if you want to do this or that. Like let's say party games are going on, and you see that these artists are coming on from five to six p.m. You see a bunch of artists that that you like, then you can show up during that time or. You know, you'll know what's going on at any point. It's not just random artists. It's it's definitely a scheduling system and everyone knows like where they're at, who they're scheduled with. So everyone's going to be really prepared. And we what we plan this for over a month now. So there's yeah. plenty of time to get it together. It's- yeah. Fun thing is, we were originally going to try and throw this block party on August first, and we oh were planning God. it. We were we were going to plan yeah. it the last last week <laughs> of July, and we're like, "Yeah, this is probably a stupid idea." You're like, yeah. you, you guys, you guys came to me. The deadline was August first. I'm like, "What? Nine days to <laughs> to prepare <laughs> yeah. all this? I get yeah, all these artists together for yeah. Jesus." And nine like, days yeah. in, himself will show up and doodle his face for you. Right. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> Right, or I'll try to mimic every artist I know. I'm like, okay, what kind of drawing do you want? I'll do all of them, I swear. Go easy on me. My name's Meat Canyon, guys. Hurry. I'll draw you. Hi, I'm Foo Shark. I'm definitely the real Foo Shark. I'm definitely the real Foo Shark. (laughs) I drew a boob for you. Hey, kid, you like Mogi 64? (laughs) Do you want to see something? (laughs) Yeah, I'll just mimic everybody else that would be me if i had that kind of schedule but with this with That's this awesome. um especially because we we have a month for it I, I i'm over scheduled on artists so if you do show up to the block party and you're like oh i want to see some art you get you're getting like at least nine nine different artists maybe some won't be able to make it maybe some will be there for a while because because not everyone knows their schedule that well and then especially because of time zones it's not nothing is concrete so i could schedule nine and only have five but there's definitely or five that show up but there's definitely a lot of variety, and I made sure to uh, pick different styles too. So it, it'll de- it'll be interesting seeing everyone interact, and and the I'm main so thing I hear from yourself. artists is that it's it's such a a wonderful idea. Like, oh, this sounds great. This is awesome. Art streaming? Are you kidding me? Or like art stream? I barely do that, and now and now they're all getting together in one spot. Like, you want to be at the black party because it's literally a party. Like, they normally you can't get this many people together, <laughs> especially artists. Oh my god, Sin, I'm actually going to give you props because when we threw out the art idea first, it was just kind of vague and it was like, I guess we can give artists a chance to like stream themselves and <laughs> pretend like it's an artist alley or whatever and I just kind of, we delegated and you've made this such like an amazing creative thing that I cannot wait to see what it actually turns out to be in a 29th. Seriously. Well, well, it's it, it was just amazing that you, you guys even came to me for it because immediately when I heard the idea, I got excited. Like uh, I I talk to artists like on the daily, and I become very familiar and like really good friends, or at least really good mutuals with a lot of different talented artists. And and, yeah. and I know I know how they are. Like if you ever talk to an artist, bro, they they're some of the most sociable people ever. Like oh, I never talked to they, artists. You never t- <laughs> ever. Yeah, ever. No. I don't talk. No as a rule, friends. I don't talk to artists. I don't. Do I, I, have, that. I have a no artist policy. <laughs> you con- you actually contacted Snackers like immediately for the poster, and he whipped it up in like what two days, three days. I like, did. Snackers, yeah. killed that poster. I'm so he did. And it looks it's super fun, and it's got a really good style to it, and it, I like it. It's fun. It fits <laughs> Newgrounds very well. Yeah, well, no, we, de- to- we definitely thought of you because I mean. Uh, anytime anybody who knows you has ever talked about art, you just won't <laughs> shut the fuck up. About ah, this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my thought was, you know, if, if we're doing this, we're going to have like a little artist alley thing. Let, let's get Zin Zinix involved. He'll just handle everything and we won't have to worry about it. And that's, it's paid off in dividends because you've done such an amazing job so far. Thank you better you, be careful man. too. If you work too hard, I'm going to give you another thing to do. I know, right? I have my already <laughs> busy schedule. Like, honestly, the reason I was sleeping, I only got, like, what, three hours of sleep last night, and I worked, like, ten hours a day. You know what I mean? Like, I got a really busy schedule, but I always have time for art at any point. At any point. And I can't <laughs> I can't talk to my coworkers about art. I can't no. talk to my mom about art. I can't talk to anybody about art. And that's, that's the main reason why I get so connected to artists is because... 
holy fuck, I have someone I can talk to Art about. You know? Yeah. <laughs> in real life, their eyes glaze over. They don't know what the fuck to say. They're like, what is this kid talking about? It's, or- it's literally just do- cartoon doodles on the internet. What the fuck is wrong with him? <laughs> but it hits me different, of course. Other people might know, but I don't know. What exactly do you do? as your job it sounds hard oh, whatever it is that's funny uh actually uh, quite a few quite a few users know quite a few people know um i do i do carpentry which in my own way is like uh is like an art form in of itself because with carpentry you build like i build a bunch of uh rough framing so i do decks overhangs additions um i do all the rough stuff so all your all your studs um your floors your your roofs but i don't do like the actual roofing Basically, no, and you see nothing of what I do. I mean, it always gets covered <laughs> up by someone else's work. But that it's sucks. it's art in of itself because you have to be so precise with your cuts, and you have to have a lot of care with like with what you do with your hands. Like mm. I take pride in my work, and you get in the finished project product. Um, the homeowners are always looking at it. If it doesn't look beautiful, then then you get a bunch of complaints and a bunch of this and that. So, yeah, no homeowner goes to the house and is like, I love the carpentry on this finial that you put on the side of the staircase. <laughs> <laughs> this banister finial is so freaking good. I, I'll buy the house because of it. You'd be the joist work. Man. Oh my god, the joist work is amazing. Oh my god, <laughs> they all go the same direction. Oh my god, look How at did this wood. <laughs> is that a fishtail joint? Is that a thing? I don't know. I just made them. I don't. I don't know what you said, but it sounded official. Like I could go to a homeowner and be like, "Hey, look at this fishtail joint I made," and they'd be like, "Wow, this is just a picture I, of a fishtail." That's good. That's that's good to cost extra. I think I think that's what's really cool. That's what's similar to carpentry and art too. Is that nobody knows what I'm doing, and I can get away with a lot. Like if I make a mistake, no one's gonna notice. And with art, I have no idea what the artists are doing. And even in in a lot of cases, the artists themselves don't even know what the fuck they're doing. Like with uh with Mogi, I used to write Mogi uh giant giant comments, bro, because I was like, I love your art. Like I need to decipher my feelings on this. So I would make these giant posts, and then Mogi would just respond with, Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm like, ow! <laughs> Those are some of the but best artists. It. it just kind of it comes out of them, like it just like flows from their body, like it's nothing. Yeah, and they're like, oh, right. I just drew something. Yeah, there's uh, it, they try to categorize artists as like two different kinds. There's the kind that like studies and like does a bunch of anatomical drawings and like like figures out everything that they need, like the different ingredient ingredients when it comes to drawing. And then they have the artists that just fucking spew it on the paper, and it's it's fucking gorgeous. They have they're like, lol, you know, <laughs> this is nothing <laughs> special to me. And then to me, it looks like yeah, it looks like know, the work just of doodling. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I don't know, bro. Just doodling. I'm like, well, your doodle makes me want to like cry or like contemplate <laughs> yeah. my own life decisions. <laughs> it looks that good. <laughs> I want to do that. God damn it. Damn it's it. like how some people are like naturally funny. And when they talk, they're just like funny things come out of their mouth and they don't know why. And then there's some people that go to like comedy camp and then they like study the jokes and the heightening and improv and yes and and then they go on stage and they're kind of like kind of funny i can tell you're doing something but it's like not speaking to me people go to comedy camp or like improv improv stuff you know wouldn't it be funny if like you had a kid they weren't funny and you're like <laughs> you're go going to comedy, comedy camp, camp. <laughs> <laughs> kid, we gotta get you into comedy you're gonna die out there on the playground you, man. you gotta you're get the comedy camp. <laughs> You, you, got you, got you, got spaghetti arm, you got spaghetti arms, you can't fight, you gotta be funny, son. <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm sorry, son. You fat, you got no friends, but I'm sending you to comedy club or camp. <laughs> exactly. Mm. I, I might, I might, uh, if I ever have a kid, I'm just gonna uh, put them through art and then tell them if they don't do art, they're gonna be disappointed disappointment yeah. to me you know what i mean like most most <laughs> most parents are like don't do art or like they they actually there's this uh 14 year old artist on twitter who's talking about how their parents don't support their art so they do all their art with a fucking mouse and it's pixel art and they're really good and they do everything oh. with a mouse but their parents don't support it and, and, and it's actually really common that their parents don't get like oh you're doing art what the fuck is wrong with you i told my mom i want to do art one time she's like she literally almost started crying she was like she's like honey don't you know what a starving artist is? Yeah. You don't want to be that. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, I will. I want to be that. I'm like, I will starve for my art. And it, it wasn't Man. the smartest thing to do, but I did it. I had to. I had to find out. You went from art school. Oh, yeah. You became an artist, where you wanted to be an artist, and you told your parents about it, and they were like, "Fuck that." 
Well, like, my, I, I told my dad about my dad was cool with it. And I was like, yeah, I might be drawing naked chicks because I was like, I was I, at the time I was I was so desperate to become an artist and learn anatomy. I was like, dude, I might I might just do the NSFW route. And I, so I told my dad, I'm like, you know, I draw naked chicks and shit. I posted a picture on Facebook like of something I drew. And he's like, ah, I think that's I think that's really cool. And my mom's like, no, you can't do that for a living. <laughs> She's like worried. You know what I mean? Like most parents get worried over that. When Mom, Austin's you didn't even know about furry Austin. art. You wouldn't, you well, wouldn't yeah, say yeah, that yeah. about furry art, You don't Mom. know about the, the adi- furry etiquette in art. You wouldn't know. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a divine process. It's very, uh, it's very, it's very technical. You got to be at a certain level when you're drawing dogs with dicks, you know? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Just imagine your, your mom like... Uh, Mom, I'm coming out. I'm an artist. Oh, couldn't you just be gay? <laughs> <laughs> Why right. couldn't you just be gay, son? She walks in my room. It's just a bunch of furry porn that I drew, <laughs> self drawn all over the room and shit. She's like, oh my God, I wish Get you out. were gay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You say, oh, well, I got some of that stuff over in that corner if you want to see it. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, someone paid me twelve dollars to draw that in the corner. Yeah, it's right there. <laughs> I'm not gay, mom, but twelve dollars is twelve dollars. Believe it or not, my older brother okay. turns out to be gay and a furry, so he's both of those things. So <laughs> to have, I could have, I don't know, I could have turned out different. I could have been that. Like it's a fact. <laughs> Jesus, man. Um, <laughs> What's surprise? But what's surprising about well, becoming an artist is how toxic it really can be. Like, like a lot of people think artists. That sounds fun, right? It sounds like a good time. It sounds like a really calm, good time. Like, oh, artists! Yeah. yeah, your life is gonna be really like chill. It's not. A lot of a lot of artists go through depression. A lot of artists have to have to battle between with their own anxiety. They got a lot of things going on. They gotta leave Twitter every so often or mm. forever. And Hassy Soda left Twitter, never fucking came back. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I mm. still see her on new grounds. She's she's a great ass artist too, and it's it's surprisingly like a really dangerous field to get into is art because you mentally dangerous you, you mean yeah yeah like uh yeah mentally dangerous you you gotta always be checking your mental health and you have to have the right people in your life and then you think oh I'm gonna get a bunch of commissions and do those but then you get burnt out on those and then you don't get that when you're drawing six or eight drawings in a row for for clients like you start seeing your same style over and over and you start questioning like am i growing at all mm. like uh, these these are questions that that i get from uh, artists a lot about themselves when they're when they haven't drawn something for themselves in a while it's it's I remember, difficult i remember talking to artists about like on shows in the past it's the biggest thing that you face as somebody who's doing a hobby that becomes a job yeah. or that you make your job is that it stops being fun and you have to reckon with what this is to you now as opposed to what it was when you weren't doing it for cash well when you're yep. an artist too like a, a lot of what you draw you know it's, you probably have some sort of anxiety or some sort of um even autism or whatever but you know art is just the way you kind of deal with things like i know when i was in school and stuff you know i i didn't do like school work i was just drawing in my notebooks all day that's just kind of how i dealt with the pressure of school, the boredom, shit like that. And so for a lot of people, art is kind of just a way to get get out of their heads or express themselves. Yeah. Mm. And, and and when that's what you do uh, for your mental health and that suddenly becomes your job, like, oh, Ugh. God. That's like oil and water, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually. Taking a big mental anchor and then turning it around and making it the most stressful part of your day. Yeah, oh God. Like, the, the, the only thing that helps me relax is now the source of stress in my life. Yeah, exactly. Now the source of stress. Yeah. yeah. No, and I it, get that. And it's it's hard to understand that at first, but until you live that that lifestyle, because a lot of artists, it, oh my God, you don't know how many times you can you can cite that someone has said, I I will live bare minimum. Just to do art. So not only are you are you doing art all the time and trying to make a living out of that, but if you're not making enough, which you won't, which you will not at first make enough, it takes a lot for an artist to raise their commission prices to a, to a good price. Like like Matthew Lops just recently raised his prices. When I first saw them, I was like, damn, they are cheap. Now right now they're at like a good level, and it takes a lot of confidence to do that. You're not making enough, so you don't even get to live live a, a lifestyle to where you're enjoying everything you want. Like right. you have to limit yourself, and a lot of artists are like. 
like if I can live bare minimum, I all I want to do is art. And so you're even you're in an even more pressured situation financially. So mentally and financially, you're you're in trouble. And then guess what? Physically, you're in trouble too because you're sitting there. You a lot of artists don't realize that they're gonna <laughs> hurt. Like I just brought up uh, Hassy Soda. Hassy Soda's back. She she made a news post like uh, maybe a week ago on Newgrounds about um how her back has been uh, has been uh, suffering because of of hunching when you draw. And she wants to get into music now and do other things but she's she's like mm. having facing those health problems i think um i forget what artist maybe death think maybe it was him but they got a pain in their arm from drawing too from doing it so much that they had to take breaks off of it there's other artists i've seen have to do that if you keep updating our artists on the twitter eventually someone one of the artists you know will will uh, be suffering from an injury yeah. from art in their arm or something it's so real even i like at the beginning of the first quarantine going from i kind of walked around and sat and did a lot of things for my job going to just sitting down and like for me it was just like a dining room table at first no less i was dead my back was like gone like <laughs> my back was gone like an old man in a commercial like <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you do it done. if you do it long enough though you, you just turn into a hunchback and get used to it it's fine it's fine. like that's what you are yeah you just <laughs> yeah. turn into some freaking hunchback yeah. Yeah, in your room for- in your dark lit room with the- <laughs> <laughs> get out <laughs> Yeah. And your dad knocks and you're like, are you winning, son? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, I'm happy. So so <laughs> mentally, financially, and physically, literally the, the three apex of health that you need in life are all suffering the moment you decide to become an artist. Like, right. Like, like your friends are influencing you to become an artist. Just know they hate you because they, they don't understand <laughs> yeah, they the tum- you turmoil you're going through. Yeah, that you're going to have to yeah. go through. And, oh, and critiques. Uh, you get a bunch of assholes on the internet, <laughs> especially Twitter. That's true. Like, ah, oh, you drew her tits too big. Her back hurts herself. <laughs> like, like, dude, I just made a drawing. Just back off of me. <laughs> like, do you, she has a you know, metal fake. She has a metal impervious superhuman spine. There, I made it up. It's my fictional work. <laughs> exactly. And that was Laura. That was a secret. But now I got to tell everyone. <laughs> yeah. I spoiled the Jesus. whole story for you now. Exactly, no. man. And I've seen, I've seen, I've seen uh, commenters on Twitter, like literally 3D model, like the way the way a human uh, body would work underneath someone's drawing you'd be like oh your drawing isn't right this is how you're supposed to draw it and then the artist is like dude what the fuck it's literally like nobody draws something they're not proud of yeah right. I don't care who you are if you're drawing something you've analyzed it like 10 times over and you won't put it out until you're satisfied with it so for an artist to even put out something that's a big deal and for you to for anyone to just shit on it or be like oh you suck or oh I don't eh I just don't like it or, uh, yeah. I don't like your style. Like, okay, that's nice, but what are the points that I did hit? The things that I <laughs> did do well? Like, why are you even, why are you even here if, if you don't care about my art or, or are able to at least find something to, to actually criticize me on? You know? It's such an intimate, personal product that you're making. Yes. You know, like, 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 it's almost like writing where you're kind of pouring your own soul into it and putting your own decisions and your whole, your kind of essence into something. And when they're critiquing it, they're kind of sort of critiquing you by proxy, by what you've chosen to put in there based on yourself. Yes. So going into that mental thing you were talking about, like you're burying your mental soul. <laughs> on a, I don't care yeah. if you're making a, you know, not safe work, furry art or a Da Vinci or whatever. It's still going to be you. And if somebody critiques it, they critique you. And that hurts. You got to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like your own personality is just fucking put out there on Front Street for everyone to view. Like that's not an easy thing to do, and and you you'll notice uh, personalities. I think personality is the most important thing when it when it comes to being an artist. You have to have either charisma or some type of uh, way of being yourself, and you'll see that shows up in everyone's drawings. Yeah, I'm gonna every, just that's, hype. I'm just gonna hype the chat because people are being very smart and grim, Jimmy. Says others are like artists never really suffered. They're not as essential as doctors and first responders. And you're like, who the fuck said an artist has to be as essential? They'll harass you over comics and fan art you drew, and then they'll gawk at the striking detail on the David Statue's penis. 
<laughs> that you know what? Jamie. That statue is so wrong, though. There's not a single vein on that piece. Yeah, uh, that's true, bro. Yeah, come on. When have you Mike, ever looked down and not seen a vein in your dick? Like, Mike, Michelangelo is the worst <laughs> artist ever. Yeah. yeah. I, give him, I give him a half a star. I'll give him a half a star for trying. For somebody real. should do that. Somebody should, like, just roast fucking Renaissance art, like, as if it was, we like, should. We should today. start a, a thread in the forums. <laughs> We should start a thread in the forums and see and blam all that and then pieces yeah. of shit. If they it's get blamed, that, we gotta go. We gotta go <laughs> blow them up in real life. It's gotta be either yeah. that or you redo David just with the big, veiniest, wrinkly balls, <laughs> dick the and biggest, balls that you've the ever seen. The biggest fucking dick ever. Just the hmm. giant fucking cock. Because it's art. There's cocks everywhere. I don't know what to tell That's you. That's right. <laughs> Cox tits and ass everywhere, bro. <laughs> it's it's weird. It's weird how many how many uh how many not um how many NSFW artists are really just fucking great artists with amazing personalities. Actually, um, in Art Talks in the little podcast I had going on for a while, in Art Talks I broke down the the essential points of NSFW artists and and like what makes you an NSFW artist and what leads you down that road. And it turns out you just got to be funny. You got to be good at art and your art. You, you got to do it. Uh, and Animation. A lot of really good NSFW artists do animation, and they're mm-hmm. funny. They're hilarious. Like uh, they like dives. Dives is really fucking funny. They they put out funny things. Blue the Bones really funny. RTIL is really funny, and they all do really great animations. And they got this like really soft coloring, this very human aspect mm-hmm. to their art. It's it, and they do NSFW, and yeah, and yeah, you got Speedo. Speedo literally, bro. Bro, Speedo literally has uh, an animation of, of Link from Legend of Zelda <laughs> just sucking dick. Just literally just <laughs> taking dick in the ass and shit. And then Speedo has this uh, amazing music video for Snail's House on YouTube. Like, professional, looks fucking great. I, I didn't even realize it was Speedo until, until uh, like, six months after getting back on new grounds and fucking and hanging out. I'm like, holy shit, I know that guy. Because I listened to Snail's House, like, on repeat because I had a playlist. Like, uh, time and time again, I was like, I was like, this is an amazing video. And it, it turns out the person who drew that draws a lot of dicks and a lot mm-hmm. of cum. It was just, it was cum. <laughs> the portfolio is just full of cum. How else do you get cum. good? That's the one way to get good. <laughs> How else do you, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and what's weird is, um, NSFW is really profitable too. Um, mm-hmm. do anyone here know VG Cats? Do you, do you remember yeah, yeah, VG yeah. Cats? Yeah, yeah. That was a comic so, that was been going on forever, right? The forever, bro. So video game cats, right? They make fun of uh, CS:GO. They make fun of all the all the video games. They got cool lines and whatnot. Is there and they adult said, stuff of them, bro? I, that's a bad question. On Patreon, on Patreon, everything. Will, will bro, no, but they started you their own little. little. They, <laughs> they started their own little endeavor. Yeah. They it's called VG VG Cats Ludes or VG Ludes or whatever it is, and mm. and they said they literally make more money, and and the fan base is way more nicer to them too. And it just made bank. They're they're making like I don't know, uh, like thirty five hundred a month or some shit like that off of wow. that. Yeah. So and, and, and they said it started from uh, they, you know, they did warm ups to get used to drawing the characters for VG Cats. They would, he would draw them naked. You know, what I mean, it, as a warm up, get the anatomy out there, and eventually people were like, I kind of want to see that, and then. Boom. Of course, because of Patreon, any endeavor can just get supported whenever at any point. That's why having yeah. a personality as an artist is so important because the main thing you're going to need are investors if you're if you're going to try to try any type of uh, lengthy endeavor. And then you also need connections. So you got to get yourself out there. So VG Cats went fucking lewd and mm-hmm. they made more money and had even better fans. And I looked them up and, and this was my buddy telling me this when um when I was when I looked at them and I was like, yeah, dude, I might just try a hentai and just, you know, I hope you guys don't mind because I was in the basement i had a little tablet and i was i was drawing all the time and they're like no dude that makes that's complete sense we I, we like anime titties too actually vg cats <laughs> fucking remember them yeah now they just they just draw them fucking all the time and they, <laughs> i'm like that sounds great <laughs> I'm like, the up. money in there is great so it's hard to look down at anybody oh. for doing nsfw but obviously you want to do it appropriately so your image doesn't get doesn't get branded incorrectly yeah i had to look this up but there's another guy i used to follow uh david willis and his comic is called uh dumbing of age it's a like college freshman kind of like social comedy web comic he did the same thing and i remember being freaking blown away at the choice to do this but he started making sex comics of his own characters and like like uh, erotic offshoot comics that he would kind of sell based on the yeah. his own characters. And at first I was like, gee, that's a little weird because usually the people that make the characters are 
kind of a little too protective of them to consider them in that way. Yeah. But I guess this guy has no problem seeing it that way and he's going to make some bank off it because the characters he has made you know and love, now he's drawing porn of them and it's accurate because it's him drawing it. It's yeah. his style. <laughs> it's canon. It's, it's canon. canon. <laughs> it's canon. It is canon. He literally says it's canon. This is a canon part of the story. <laughs> it's them Amazing. fucking. And what's yeah. what's crazy is as kids uh, and growing up and whatnot, you know, you see all these, you might get into anime, you might not, but you see all these characters, you never see them naked. You know what I mean? Like, right. and, and I don't know about you, but the most like intimate moment you can have with someone is like, is like when you're both naked. You know what I mean? I mean well, I don't know if you know this, but when a boy and a girl <laughs> love each other very much, they get naked. No, and sometimes on. it's just That's cool seeing that. It's just really nice seeing that. It's just, uh, well, it's, it's going. I'm writing. Will, Will, Will's taking notes. Yeah, I'm, t- I'm writing this down. I was about to make that okay. joke. Damn it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. I, I want to see Danny Phantom naked. <laughs> Jeez. But that's, you know what I mean? But it's, it's like, uh, it's like that slice for like, a, as you get older and more mature and you've been around enough naked people, you know what I mean? <laughs> Had enough yeah. orgies at your house to where you're just cool. <laughs> My with, house. With seeing everything else naked. Yeah, your house specifically, Will. I thought you, <laughs> okay. I thought that's what you meant by cock party. Oh, block party. My bad. I'm uh, sorry. I thought you said cock party. My that's bad. That's a very good segue back into the block party. Good job. <laughs> So yeah, fucking tits and cocks and shit everywhere. Like that sounds like a a, yeah. a a party. That sounds like a party. And speaking of parties, in why don't you tell us a little bit about the art e contest? The what? The, the art e contest. I'm sorry, are you spitting and they call me art. Yeah, party contest, <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the party contest. Uh, for hey, those of you who okay. don't know, the party is lowercase p, capital A R D, yeah. and then lowercase y. Yeah. Hey, guess who came <laughs> up with that? Seriously. Who? You had three who, guesses before who I came up you. with Who came up with such a genius idea? It you? had to be. No. Had to be somebody. Only guess I had. All right. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So, so I, I approached Fru Shark for the art, obviously, but it was actually Mogi64 who came up with that idea for the uh, small P, big A, R, T, and then the small Y. I, all I could think of for the contest idea was party contest because it just sounds like something easy to get into, something generalized enough to where you, you'll look at it and be like, hey, maybe I can do this. And uh, Fru Shark was drawing it, and I guess he told Mogi64, showed Mogi64 about it because um, they, they sometimes stream together, I, I would imagine, because they're in that same friend circle. And then Mogi came up with that. So I, right. I hopefully Mogi joins the contest. I would love to see something from Mogi from that. And I love, of course, I love Mogi's uh, OCs. I love everyone's OCs, man. OCs are where it's at. The original characters, they're so cute. And you like, you get the personality of everyone's character, and then you get, you also get the uh, artist personality mixed in there. Like Zen, like my little OC, like he's li- he started off as just a, a self insert, is what they're called when you mm-hmm. when you do an OC that's of yourself. Like that's Zen is. Part of my is literally a version of me, except except maybe I I pick on him a little much. Like I I put my OC <laughs> through some shit, you know. <laughs> like I oh. I put him through some struggles, and I'll be like, I can relate to this, and I'm just drawing him like falling down the stairs or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you feel. <laughs> I like this feeling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let's switch, steer up. steer it back just a second. So if people who are listening, they they don't know what the contest is. What is the contest? What is the contest? The contest is a basically original character contest to where you take a bunch of uh, maybe characters of your friends, maybe characters of people you look up to, maybe even your own characters that you once came up with, and then you draw them having a good time. Uh, it can be generalized as anything. Whatever you think having a good time is in like a party aspect. There's a bunch of bonus points you can get for like summer themes, for having showing a lot of fun, good fashion sense, like just generally just having a good time. Like um, I shot the idea to Foo Shark for the party contest. Contest and and he came up with that and I didn't know what the fuck he was drawing until it was done <laughs> and he came out with karaoke where on the on the on the teleprompt it's it's never gonna give you up it's it, it, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> You got it's, Rick rolled. Yeah, it's That's literally good. Rick rolling, and it's his badass dragon OC just singing it. Beautiful colors. Foo Shark blows me away with the with the bold colors that he chooses. The way everything looks so shiny and crisp. And it, it only takes him like maybe three days tops to pump Dang. something out like that. And and he, that's what he came up with. That was his idea for the party contest. So whatever whatever you, comes to mind for you when it comes to the party contest, that's what it is. You you just showing you're getting a reason to draw these characters. That normally you don't have time for. Maybe you got too many commissions going on. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe you just, uh, 
I, I just never draw my OC because there are all these other things going on. Now I'm giving you a reason to bust that character out because that's I want to I want to see that. I want to see your people out and about because yeah. that's originally what got me into art was all these original characters. I used to draw comics of people fighting each other with other people <laughs> online. And that, that was because of Newgrounds. Newgrounds is the reason for that. I don't know, Psycho Goldfish, if you know what Super Paint Brawl was. Big Bad Ron right, uh, right. ended up deleting a thread called super paint brawl where everyone was or ms paint brawl where everyone was drawing a bunch of comics bunch of 13 year old kids 12 year old kids drawing a bunch of sick figures having adventures and 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 that got shut down so then so then they migrated to their own forum and i was on the new grounds forum trying to fight people with a stick figure and they're like ah you should you should go here because they (laughs) locked my thread and they're like, go here. And I went there and I ended up drawing all these characters. So I have such a love for just every. And you know what I mean? When you're 12, 13, drawing comics with other people, you got your character. That's basically you interacting with other people. Yeah, it's validated. They're like, yeah. And they were yeah. like, I don't know, 13 guys and like four, like three chicks. That my first, my first girlfriend was online because of drawing comics. Like, nice. <laughs> so it goes deep. It goes, and she had, she was like one of the best artists. She drew full body is what you call it when you're, when you're back in the day when we were all stick figure artists, but she drew full body <laughs> art, like in an anime style. She's really fucking good. And she drew her character and my character chilling in a, in a spa one time. And it's like, you get used to that to that personality being in these characters and I just I fell in love with it man and I anything I can do to see more of that and I figured what's easier than hosting a little party contest to where you're just you're basically drawing for yourself you're basically yeah. self advertising your own characters your own your own style and then just sh- showing them having fun so let's hey, say it's a you, little po- you, it's uh, a little party contest but it has a big pot to it I think that's a lot yeah, of people yeah, are excited yeah, about yeah 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 huge so let's say let's say you make a drawing you don't even you don't even win so this first place $300 so holy fuck right you're thinking you're thinking if I enter this and I win $300 that's what like maybe three commissions maybe three small commissions four if if they're really low balling it yeah and, and you're drawing and, what and, you want you're not drawing what somebody else wants so it's like exactly double yeah, zero OC, just having fun just well, having on, that, fun. on that note so what about people that don't have their own oc are, are you cool with them drawing other people's ocs as long as it's it's somebody's original character absolutely but as if you don't know the the person of the oc like that they that they own I would I would recommend getting uh, permission. Obviously, there's a lot of artists that don't mind. You can you can draw mm-hmm. Mogi's character anytime. You can draw Cashew Mero's character anytime. Foo Sharks, Pepperoni Ravioli, like any. Mainly artists get flattered from you drawing their OC. So you, yeah. I'm only saying ask them permission, like just in case you show them drinking or in like certain <laughs> situations, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, well, and like, it's like we said, it's kind of personal. It's kind of like them. So yeah, you, you got a personal asset basically. that they have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I recommend if you don't know the person of the OC that you're drawing, you ask permission. Like, I'm, re- I'm really bad with that. Like, I wouldn't ask permission to draw Matthew Lobster's character, but that's because I know him. Or like Blue the Bone, I, I, that's because I know what she likes. I know she likes the uh, OC art and whatnot. So right. if you're not familiar with them and you think you don't know enough about them, I recommend just asking. That's all. And I, I doubt artists get flattered by other artists all the time. Ma- and yeah. matter of fact, most commissions come from other artists. Like other artists support artists all the time, so I, I doubt anyone's gonna have an issue if you draw their OC and they really don't know you. I just put that just in there for like a little ask, safety man. net. Yeah, yeah, definitely better yeah. to ask. So first yeah. place three hundred dollars, second place two hundred, and third place one hundred, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's good. And, and then, the thing and then, I'm excited about is that we're going to be doing the winner of the contest as a live announcement show at the end of the block party. Yes. Block party! Don't, hey, don't forget, don't forget. There's a raffle too. If you enter the party contest and you don't win, you're into a raffle where I'll commission you. If you win, it'll be randomized. Everyone gets one entry. So even if you don't win, you're still in that raffle to win a commission from me, which you know will be whatever whatever price we can negotiate on. It's it's just you know you doing art for yourself, but you can. I'm basically I'm letting you do art for yourself, but I'm trying to pay you for that. You know, for like the best submission, the most original. Not and I judge on um creativity. It's really hard to judge art, but because mm-hmm. it's hard to put your feelings like into thoughts, into words. Put your feelings into thoughts. Put your thoughts into words, <laughs> and um. I'm trying to judge it on creativity so anyone with a low skill level can honestly outbeat someone who's been doing art forever because your idea could just be better than theirs. Like yeah. Wonder Shrifty is coming out with something. Obviously, she's a she's a newbie artist, but if her idea is really good, she can outbeat someone like Cashew Meru or Matthew Lops or fucking Mogi if they do it or, or even Chips Go Whoa. Like if 
if your idea your idea is the point in this so i try to make it for newbies for the experts for everyone just to have a good time and it, it it the amount of art that should come out from it should be enough to satisfy because it's my birthday month you know <laughs> yeah august it's mine 30th too, actually. Is, so w- uh, Will's when's birthday, your birthday? my birthday is august 9th today. august 9th two days after this recording right now Hooray. holy snap yo that's Yay. right <laughs> yeah so that's all i wanted for my birthday i i i the reason why i spent so much money on art and just don't even bat an eye is because i've been like like i've struggled in the past and i've like been broke for way less aspirations i've been broke for way less i got all these goddamn anime figurines they're worth like what like 140 a pop sometimes i've Jeez. spent I, I spent money on dumber things until eventually it, it clicked that like i love art so much i love just putting putting my love for art into words i love i just love being around it i like seeing it i like artists i like new grounds like if any of that went away i would be devastated my life would be so much less entertaining i wouldn't feel as creative i wouldn't be as stimulated and i was like all right so instead of just mindlessly blowing my money on things to fill that that void i was like why not why not just spend it supporting these artists and then one thing led to another first episode of grounds breaking got made during quarantine i ended up interviewing another artist for the second episode the second episode of grounds breaking i interviewed for nine hours i interviewed an artist for nine hours that's how many questions i had for them and written down like i i took that love for art and now Jeez. now it doesn't bother me to spend that much money on art and i work a lot i literally work my ass off and i feel great about it because i know i can afford these things like putting in 60 hours a week like that the 20 hours of overtime going to artists you know what i mean all that goes to artists Mm -hmm. my regular 40 hours that goes in the bank and and that's how i live my life like yeah sure i could have double the money in my bank account but it it wouldn't mean nothing to me if i wasn't actually supporting the things i love And, and, and and it pays itself back in dividends like blew the bone 150 fucking thousand followers and yet i talked with her on her server she wrote my birthday down on a calendar for being a patreon and whatnot oh. and, and we hang out she knows me she calls me Xenix. and and she'll say good morning like good night <laughs> in her right? server she's cool she hangs out and it she talks with everyone and our, our, our rtil getting to know him was really it was really interesting too um matthew lops just by commissioning him getting to know him was awesome cashew mirror commissioning commissioning cashew mirror we became best friends like well not like best friends but really good friends and we hang we talk yeah. all the time and hey cashew mirror is actually going to be one of the people in the block party too yeah uh he's he won't know until like the 17th but i have i'm going to commission him to do some promo art so of his oc bird who's really cute i love his fucking oc that's good because she's She's an athletic OC. All right, I'm getting a little weird here, but she's athletic. <laughs> I, li- I like I like characters like that. I like so, my birds. I like fit. it. She's I like, athletic. Yeah. <laughs> she's fit. She's a- she <laughs> like to run. I have this. I have this. I like to run. So whenever I see characters, I like to run. That's another thing. I can feel that void of like having no one in my life that likes to run. No one to run with. I could just ah oh, look at that OC. At least they're yeah. doing it. It's, There's an artist know. I am a fan of. Do you know Youngbird? Oh, uh, I've heard. Yeah, actually, I've seen them. I haven't seen them around for a long time. Actually, I, uh, they still do. I just joined their Patreon recently. That they, they do some, like I would say, their OCs are in sports situations sometimes. <laughs> That's yeah, good sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're uh, it's, it's sometimes. spelled Y U N G. Uh, yeah, bird, right? Yeah, I knew them immediately when you said that. I haven't seen mm-hmm. much from them lately. They have a really good uh. Really good Mako drawing from uh, Kill the Kill. Oh my God, wasn't that good? Actually, the last the last drawing they uploaded was on July seventh to Newgrounds. Yeah, mm. I, I see. I, I have all these artists all automatically backlogged in my head, and I haven't seen nothing from Youngbird for a month. You yeah. know, they're all active <laughs> on Patreon. I don't know. Maybe just not going over to Newgrounds as much. That's true. Well, it's, you'd be surprised how many artists uploaded Newgrounds first, and then like eight hours later they'll upload it to Twitter. And whatnot, and I, I get being active on Patreon yeah. first, but but there's so much. We love upload the for, podcast for the new to Newgrounds Grounds. first. The podcast goes Newgrounds first, then it goes to uh, Pinecast, which we use to get out to the apps like Apple Podcast and Spotify. And so I wanted to talk before we do have to go, if we have to go soon, about the rest of the things that are going to be in our block party because there's a lot of freaking yes. fun stuff. Yeah, we got the artist row, which we have talked about. We're gonna have live DJ sets, which I'm pumped for. I'm uh, helping organize some of those guys, and I can say that right now we have. Bad Magic is doing an hour-long set. Fat Kid with the Jetpack is doing an hour-long set. Echoes Aurora is doing an hour-long set. And these are all just people, good, experienced, like, disc-spinning DJs. I'm describing this as well as I can. (laughs) They're going to be, like, (laughs) streaming themselves doing a live show just for us. That's going to be three consecutive 
runs of DJs doing sets. That's freaking awesome. Yeah. And then you got the party game rooms uh, run by Psycho Goldfish and, and company. You got um, yep. what well, Lobster Mango is going to be running one of them, too. I wish Chutney Glaze would show up. He's really fun to do party games with. So party games are always a fun time. Everyone's <laughs> laughing. Psycho Goldfish tries to get me to drink. But I'm like, dude, I'm not drinking at home alone. And then Mr. Snuggles <laughs> is just lit as fuck when we're doing party <laughs> games. <laughs> so so yeah. it's always a good time. And we meme. We meme a lot. So a lot comes out of it like in your own normal life because you end up saying a bunch of shit like who the fuck is she like nobody <laughs> understands it except us but it's, it's just the funniest shit yeah that we come up with in there so it's, it's a good every- time in regards to the party game rooms um if, if you're listening and you own anything like the jackbox party pack one through six or games like that or there's uh some free web games i am still looking for volunteers um uh, and this kind of goes, uh, we'll probably talk about how the party's going to be set up anyway. Um, we're actually going to have, uh, multiple channels or multiple rooms and stuff. So you don't have to worry about one room being super full. So we're going to have one person run a Jackbox game in one room, maybe with a 20 user limit. And ev- ev- as many volunteers as I can get in their availability will have rooms. So hopefully we can squeeze quite a few people into these rooms. Um, they're going to be running pretty much all day in parallel with the other events. So they're not the main attraction. It's just kind of a place to come and hang out and have fun. One thing I was thinking for how much stuff we got going on, especially once the live music comes on, you all are going to want to have multiple devices. <laughs> so, yeah, for real. So you can, you, can, you can be on your phone with your headphones listening to the DJ while you, you play a party game or while you check out an artist. Like, you're definitely going to want to double up on some devices because there's going to yeah. be so, yeah. so much going on. One of the cool party games that we play a lot is called the TKO. And we were talking about this. Uh, the basic premise of the game is you kind of make t-shirts. They're always stupid and hilarious. <laughs> but... But one of the cool things about the game is you can literally buy the shirts you guys make. So we were talking about maybe doing that, buying some shirts as giveaways for, for the party. And that led to one thing to another and brings up another thing I wanted to bring up. We are actually going to be selling raffle tickets for giveaways. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm making a, a system for purchasing. It's just going to be a simple PayPal form, nothing crazy. But anybody that wants to buy tickets in advance, we will be having a link for that up. I'm hoping to have it up before this show comes out uh, on new ground. So about a week, mm-hmm. uh, you'll be able to go in, you'll be able to pick uh, a pack, like for instance, a five pack of tickets will cost five bucks or you can buy 10 for nine bucks and up and up and you get discounted. Um, that money is going to fund our giveaway pool. We don't know exactly what we're giving away yet. Yeah. Um, we're going to look at it. We, we'll also take donations. If you just want to donate to the prize pool and don't care about winning, that's cool too. But cool. based on, based on what we raise, we're just going to blow it all and give you guys away some cool prizes throughout the day. At yeah. the beginning of the party, we're going to record a podcast. The uh, first 30 minutes will be us kind of getting everybody hyped, which should be easy because you should already be hyped. <laughs> yeah. Of course. It's easy to be hyped for. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm yeah. so excited. <laughs> And then we're going to we'll be like 3.30 is the half hour kind of opening show. Hype, hype, hype. Starting at 4 o'clock, we got the art and we're going to be doing music. There's going to be a channel also that has like Newgrounds animations that we're streaming. At 9 o'clock, we're going to be doing the big old closing show, which is going to be like raffles. And we're going to be doing the uh, contest reveal and just generally all gallivanting, having a good time. Then after that, we want to do a movie watch along kind of thing. In that same video channel, you're going to be able to watch a movie all together, and we might do a drinking game or something for that, too. Yeah. Woo! Except for except for Zinn, because he won't drink, because he doesn't consider you virtual people real. <laughs> yeah, he won't well, drink I, alone. I just, I can't get drunk in a room by myself. Like, this, I, <laughs> somebody go hang I, out with him drink, so he doesn't drink alone. Just go to his house. Yeah, somebody come over to my address. It's P.O. Box 377. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and my social security just, number is 25. It's just too far. Right, right. <laughs> I just, it's just, once I'm done playing the party games and I'm like drunk, then what do I do? Like, go to bed? I can't do yes. that. Like, it's, no, yeah, it's, it's not fun. Could take a walk. Fun. Just take drunkenly, a walk. Hit, hit, drunkenly hit up all the artists, you know. Hey, you oh walk. my God, that would be awful. <laughs> that would be awful. I have such a good name. Like, I would hate to ruin that. It's like, hey, <laughs> draw me dick pics. <laughs> <laughs> of mine. Here's a picture. Draw this. <laughs> exactly. Oh, also, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking I'm really going to go ahead and do that that art raffle. If if you buy an artist a, a coffee, then you'll be entered in a raffle to win a commission from any of the artists that are live streaming. Like, any one of them. 
That's awesome. So, and I'll pay for dope. it. Like I'll either double how much was totally donated. So let's say let's say fifty coffees were 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 bought. So fifty times three. Oh, that's one hundred fifty dollars. Oh wait, hold on. <laughs> wait, <laughs> I can't this is not that. confirmed. Shit. You did not hear it here first. Song. <laughs> but it'll be like it'll be like a eighty dollar commission or something that you can be raffled into for the price of three dollars and supporting an artist. And if also if you support an artist, you can also negotiate with them to get a doodle. So that's interesting as well. So you can get them to live stream a doodle for you. Someone like MK Moffat would do some great doodles. I'm sure Adlam has some some expressions. She'll be there at the black mm-hmm. party as well. And then Stagger Night, all the artists, every single artist with their own individual style, I'm, I guarantee they can doodle, doodle you something pretty cool. Wait, I just under, got word. Zinzanex is going to be putting forth thirty two thousand dollar of his own money to you <laughs> that is this confirmed just in, hold on this just did thirty two thousand dollars black party ngp yes <laughs> beautiful if you buy if you buy 50 coffees he'll come to your house and build you a new roof yeah, yeah literally <laughs> well or addition we'll we can stairs. talk we can talk about it if you buy if you buy 500 <laughs> coffees then i'll be at your house i'll build you a brand new deck no you ain't even got to worry about nothing <laughs> nice <laughs> little <out>. gazebo. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, Oof. man. There's just so much with art that you can do that's so important. I'm just, I'm just trying to get that out there because yes. uh, you can take any event, anything you love, and you can literally advertise it with with an artist. Anything at all, ever that you ever thought of, you, you can do it with art. And you can I do it on new grounds. Most interesting. On new grounds. <laughs> Shout out to Tom Fault for putting fucking the party contest in the banner. Food Shark. Yes. Food Shark's art looks fucking amazing up there. And ah, the big guy, bro. The big guy. I'm glad he trusts God? me. He's like, he's like, oh, six hundred dollar art contest. He'll definitely come off of that money. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I was his money like, I was uh. I was prepared at any moment to just send the money to Tom if he was ever like, oh, well, I want to make sure, you know, you, you have the money or whatnot. And I was I would send it to him that way he could hold on yeah. to it or whatever. But I'm glad he no, trusts no. me enough. Yeah, because don't do don't do that. Because that just supports Tom Fulp's cocaine habit. <laughs> no, <laughs> right. Know. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Shout you out guys to Tom could Fulp. be so much better for all the coke in the world. Shout out to Jeez. all the artists who have uh Agreed to be as part of the block party. Shout out to anybody who's excited to go. August 29th. It starts at 3.30. Did you decide if there are going to be artists going on before that or if it's just going to start at 3.30? Uh, they're going to start at 4. So 3.30 we have the opening, right? Yeah. The 30-minute yeah. opening. Okay. So yeah. it starts yeah, at 3.30. Start at August 29th, 3.30 in this very Discord channel, the NGP Discord. And we expect everybody to be there. And it's going to be a good freaking time and shout out to Zinzinix for being on the show with us today oh man thank you thank you so much <laughs> i just course. i just like listen it's been an hour and like yep. and we were talking about art so it's felt like five minutes for me so if you want <laughs> if you want to go an extra hour long you know maybe a bonus episode you know where it's just it's just me <laughs> well, talking it's, to myself <laughs> it's, it's funny because earlier this week will got got me he goes do we have anything planned for the show like, no we got we got we got zin on it's we fine got Zinzinix <laughs> on. That's, the plan. that's what is planned <laughs> Oh man! Jesus. I'm so used to just long-winded conversations. Because one time in party <laughs> games, by the way, party games is a steep slope. Once you show up to that, like you get addicted to it. Uh, Jacob, user Jacob from uh, Newgrounds, Jacob makes a lot of music. We end up staying up until like four in the morning, having like a six-hour conversation about literally everything. Like I'm so so used to just hanging out and just bullshitting that this, <laughs> well, you know this J- is Jacob nothing. is the worst for that. He, he got he's me the worst. <laughs> He's, he's such a conversational guy. He's, I think this yeah. is the point, he's, by the way, we are going to probably wrap up the show. So, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Any story that I also do want to hear. But again, thank you so much for helping organize the yes. Bro and uh, for being such an excited part of the block party. And yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Guys, well, if you're listening, be tune into it. Amazing. All right. It's going to be so good. And um Nobody look at my art. Just because I talk about art doesn't mean I'm good at it. So, <laughs> all right, so I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go like, look at his art. So I'm, much all, shit. I'm gonna go no, look at all yeah. of his no. art. Bye. I'm we're all, out. we're signing. We're signing off now. Everybody, go look at Zin's art. That's all we're doing. No, Thanks please don't. <laughs> <in. laughs> oh my god. No. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the New Grounds podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash NGP Discord. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of his song, Gabberfly. Goodbye.